For those of you unaware, or maybe you've just been living under a rock, the Oculus Rift is a virtual reality device used primarily for gaming, but also for viewing 360 videos and similar types of content. The best way I have found to describe this to somebody that's never tried VR is just imagine whatever environment you're in now, um, whatever real life objects are there, and imagine everything was computer generated. So when you lean in, obviously things come closer to you, uh, you can turn around, objects have depth, objects have 3D, it's real life. And the Rift is the exact same way, except, you know, everything's not as in high quality as real life is because it's, of course, computer generated. The compatible games for this use primarily an Xbox One controller, which is bundled in with the Rift. There's also the Oculus Remote, which is very similar to like the Apple TV Remote or something like that, and that's used for mostly simpler games and media browsing. For games that are like racing simulators or flight simulators, there is usually support for racing wheel or HOTAS setups. And then there's a few applications like Virtual Desktop that let you use your mouse and keyboard. But for the most part, right now the gaming is done on the Xbox One controller. So with that said, you can't see your hands in the game just yet. There is some third party um, stuff out right now that will let you see your hands and use motion controllers like Leap Motion and the Razer Hydras. But Oculus doesn't have any official motion controller support until they launch their own solution with Oculus Touch later this year. So to preface this, the only VR experiences I've had before trying the Consumer Rift was I did try the Oculus DK1 for about 15 to 20 minutes. The DK1 was like their first prototype that they released for developers. Um, and I thought that one, I mean, I was glad that it worked. I could see the resolution needed improvement and the fact that I couldn't lean in and the world adjusted. There was no positional tracking. That sucked, but I thought it was cool and I was definitely addicted to it at the time but I only had a short while with it. I've also tried, I don't know the name, but I'm sure it's some sort of generic um, build that just gets shipped around to a bunch of different companies. It was some crappy quote unquote VR thing at the mall and the field of view was super small. It was just, it was terrible. Um, so that's pretty much my only experiences with VR, kind of like the very lower end of this, um, but I still, I, I sort of knew what to expect, and I've been reading about this for a while, but still with that said, the first impressions of this thing is going to blow anybody away. Like, I'll, I'll put links on the screen now, but I've showed this to, uh, and not everybody I got on camera, but probably 11 or 12 so people now, and every one of them thought the Rift was cool. There's like, I'll have the reactions up on the screen so you can click and see, because I did film a lot of them of just friends and family, but it's like, you just immediately can tell that it's literally like living in another world. And it's like, it's frustrating to try and describe this, like, the best way I could describe it is what I described in the intro, but it's, it's like, it just, it feels like you're teleported to a real place, and that's, that's just the best way to describe it. There's, it's not like 3D TV, it's not... There's no way to describe it, you really have to experience it. Like, there is a 3D effect, but it's natural. Like, 3D TV is kind of like weird. This one, there's two displays in the Rift, and then one, each one renders a different kind of scene for each eye. So just like in real life, if you put your finger like out just a few inches away from your nose, close one eye, open the other eye, and do this for you know both your eyes, you'll see that you get different images uh, of your finger, and that's how you see depth and stuff like that so the rift pretty much mimics real life exactly like that so that's why it's way better than 3d tv also the massive field of view and everything um it's just uh, it's so immersive it it really takes you to another world and like especially when you see like the alien for the first time in the oculus dream deck demo or the creatures in far lands like the first time you see artificial intelligence or like uh, non-player characters in VR it's so I don't know it just like makes you smile it's like it's like uh, man it's like going to a pet store or something and it's just like you're seeing or like a zoo and these creatures that would seem like 
just, I don't know, so bland now, seemingly, on a 2D monitor. Now they seem so lifelike and like, this is a real thing, like this isn't, this looks like an actual animal in front of me. And, man, it's so, it's just, it's a lot of fun. The Rift is kind of unique when looking at other kind of cutting edge tech, because this is definitely cutting edge technology. And it's definitely an early adopter product, but when you think about other early adopter products and like early tech, they're not always, I mean, they're usually for a very specific crowd or like very kind of geeky people into tech stuff. And the Rift is not only easy to set up, but it's, when you put it on somebody, they instantly get it. Like, it just makes sense. And like the reaction videos I took show that and the other countless reaction videos on YouTube show that like it doesn't matter how old you are if when you put the headset on it just makes sense like you completely get it you're like oh this is awesome and your eyes are just like flooded with um, just thoughts of different applications and different games and things that you want to experience in the rift like everyone will experience that it doesn't matter if you're 9 or 90 I mean my reaction videos have my grandmas in there I have my younger sister just friends parents and you know normally if I would have showed them a video game or even a new monitor or something like that they're like oh yeah that's nice but with the rift it can actually blow people away and be super super impressive the only other thing that I can use to describe what the rift is like that's kind of similar is certain things in amusement parks particularly like the spider-man ride at universal there's also those indoor harry potter rides um, those all have the large field of view 3d effects but the difference is there that you can't control anything like you can in vr you can't walk around you know you're on a fixed track but in terms of a large field of view and 3d effect those things do come close to what the rift is like but there's still different experiences at the end of the day there's already a lot of diversity and really fun concepts to try out within the rift's game catalog so far um, there's 3d platformers farlands is a free game that's like a cross between Pokemon Snap and Animal Crossing. There's lots of cockpit games like Project Cars, War Thunder, Eve Valkyrie. Minecraft has mod support with official support coming later. The Climb is a mountain climbing game that's super fun even without motion controls. There's really a lot to do and a lot of different concepts to try, but right now there's not too many fully fleshed out games made from the ground up for VR. And that's only something that's going to come in time as the market share for VR grows and more developers get on board. But right now, there's definitely enough to keep you entertained and keep you having fun, but you're still going to be wishing for more deeper, richer experiences in VR. Virtual Desktop is probably my most used Rift app. This basically replicates your desktop screen on a massive screen in front of you and there's several different environments that you can view this in outer space uh, there's a Japanese garden one there's different movie theater cinemas so with this there's like really a lot of possibilities you can load up Netflix and watch it and it looks like you're sitting in a huge movie theater watching it on the screen the only thing is it does look a bit standard resolution when you're watching it on a screen like that just because of how the Rift's resolution is magnified but it's still super watchable and text is really readable too like surprisingly readable so you can definitely do web browsing or watch Netflix or YouTube or whatever um, inside virtual desktop I was watching two episodes of Game of Thrones back to back in the cinema without any problems or any discomfort and it was super cool. It was just like it was just like being in the movies by yourself getting to watch Game of Thrones on a huge screen and that was really awesome. And I'll show on the screen a little this is just from my Snapchat video I took. Uh but I actually had a friend ask me how I got into the movies to watch Game of Thrones by myself and then I put the second video up and revealed that I was just putting my iPhone camera through my Rift lens, but I thought it was funny how that actually tricked people into thinking I was actually in the movies because that's what it looks like right through the lens right there so that was pretty cool 
aside from watching Game of Thrones and Netflix and other stuff, you can view anything that you could normally view on your desktop. So any 2D games like Hearthstone, Hearthstone you could play that in a giant theater or just on a big screen in like a Japanese garden. You can also, I mean any other 2D game, both, also both the Xbox One and PS4 have streaming to Windows 10, if you have Windows 10. So with that, you can load up, like I was playing Battlefront on PS4 just with my PlayStation 4 controller sitting in the home theater, like I had a massive 80 to 100 inch screen or something like that. And it was, uh, it's, it's super cool how you can do that. And the resolution is, does make it look standard def, but it's still definitely playable and you can still definitely read the screen. I'm pretty sure there's an app called Big Screen that kind of already does this, but I'm assuming this would be a future update for Virtual Desktop, but I really can't wait for there to be, you know, just see my friends as avatars next to me with their hands and stuff, and be able to play a game that would feel like we're playing co-op side by side on a couch, but really we could be hundreds of miles away and playing a game side by side. You don't have to worry about playing on split screen and somebody's screen looking or something, you could just play online, each of you getting to see each other's avatars, but each of you seeing, you know, your own separate gameplay and getting to play with each other and talk to each other and see, you know, look over at each other and our hands represented, that's really going to be something super compelling in the future. To list any cons for this device would be nitpicking, to be honest. Um, there's the stuff that you could argue that could be improved like the field of view and resolution while well, just want to iterate that it is amazing now but those things are kind of at like a limit and that's only that's only something that can be in improved in the future like there's just not 4k screens of that size that's going to run on modern graphics cards right now that oculus could have used you know instead in their headset there's a reason vive and the Vive and the Rift both have the same screens and are running basically the same specs. But with that said, my only true complaint is that they didn't ship with motion controllers, and that is coming later this year, but there's so many games just right off the gate where I want to see my hands tracked, I want to be able to interact even further, and it's really frustrating not to have that. So I'm really hoping developers add in that motion controller support when those come out, and it's not just used for new games on the Oculus Store. Alright, now that that's out of the way, I want to talk about some pros to the system. Um, the built-in earphones on this thing, they may look cheap, but they're like shockingly impressive. Uh, these are probably, these might be the best pair of headphones that I own. I have some Bose in-ears, but these are, they're not noise canceling exactly because they're just over ear but once you have them on and you have like the sound adjusted right and stuff I know when I've tried to walk people through demos or different games and I've talked to them I just get no response because the headphones do such a good job of blocking out the outside noise um, that they just can't hear me so the headphones on this thing I mean not only do they block noise really well but what you hear works super well. It's fully surround sound stuff, you know, like this works great in Far Lands when you hear like a little bug making a noise and you look around for it and it's right where you would expect it to be. You hear something to your right, you look to your right, it's exactly there. Something above you, below you, it works really, really well like that and it just, it replicates, you know, reality, how like things sound in reality amazingly well. This headset is certainly comfortable, and you can definitely wear this for hours at a time without any sort of discomfort. Um, from what I've read, this is probably also going to be the most comfortable VR headset on the market out of any VR headset, so with that, um, it's probably the best solution out there. The tracking on this headset is basically rock solid. Uh, when you look to your left or look to your right, the world moves perfectly in sync. It's like one-to-one, -one, exactly how you'd expect in real life. Uh, that's due partly to the 90 FPS and low persistence of the displays in there, but also the camera that handles the tracking of where your position is in the world, that handles that super well. I've, I feel like I've really pushed the camera to the limits, like 
by going almost under it to the super far left to the super far right of it and there's so many places where I would you know lift up my headset and think like okay surely I have I will lose tracking at this point and then I can still keep going like the field of view of the camera is seems to be way wider and way you know just way bigger than I would expect motion sickness is something that a lot of people have worried about with past versions of this headset and lower end headsets it can kind of cause lots of people to be motion sick or dizzy and like I mentioned earlier I demoed this to around 11 or 12 people and out of them uh, only briefly I think my grandma started to get dizzy uh, playing Far Lands and I think that's because the game doesn't show your body and doesn't show your feet touching the ground so that might be a little uh, a weird like mental disconnect and then my girlfriend who is like prone to motion sickness um, felt dizzy at first but I think that went away because she started playing the climb and didn't have any problems with it so out of 12 or so people uh, only two of them had brief kind of issues with motion sickness and dizziness and I know both of them have kind of had those issues in the past for me I remember when I tried the DK1 and that was again only for like 15 or 20 minutes but I did feel I could tell I, my stomach felt a little bit weird afterwards um, and I, I don't get that at all in the Rift. Only if I'm playing something like War Thunder or Elite Dangerous and doing lots of like spinning around or lots of barrel rolls do I feel maybe like a barely even noticeable, like just I feel like slightly off kind of thing. Like maybe just not balanced right or maybe it's slight nausea. But that's mostly due to the games. That's not due to the headset because I mean if you did a barrel roll in real life in a plane you're probably gonna feel sick and same thing for VR but I just wanna make sure people know like the headset it's not the headsets tracking or the headset display that would tend to make people motion sick likely the things that will make people motion sick are games that are not like properly optimized for VR or games that have a weird sort of movement or you know games that aren't hitting maybe the 90 FPS benchmark that's required for VR VR is super impressive and after getting to spend a few weeks with it I I truly think that this is gonna be the future of not only gaming but all forms of media and it, it's probably gonna take five to ten years for VR to go mainstream you know right now it's kind of early adopter tech but as PSVR comes out prices come down stuff like that and it's become more accessible and there's lower end versions of VR I think it's really really gonna spread and uh, probably by the end of my lifetime this will be what people use to watch almost all of their media it's only a matter of time before the headsets become higher resolution and even for six hundred dollars uh, which most people think is pricey uh, in five to ten years when there's gonna be 4k and 8k displays in these headsets like what would be the purpose of buying a TV it's it's never gonna be affordable to build an IMAX theater inside your home but if you could watch movies or shows that looked even like 720p inside of a headset and it looked the size of an IMAX theater like that that's some serious competition to traditional TVs and movie theaters lots of people I see on the internet tend to say and these are mostly people that haven't tried VR but Lots of people say that 2D games or like non-VR games are never going to go away. And they probably won't, um, not for a long time anyways, but I think the future of these games is going to be people playing them primarily in VR. So by that I mean you're going to be booting up like a virtual cinema or a virtual home theater and you're going to play whatever console games or 2D games and it's gonna be on a massive screen and you can see your friends represented by avatars and stuff like that I think that's gonna be the future of those games I hate to say like wait for this or buy this or don't buy this with the rift because I don't know people's like financial situations and how much gaming or tech means to them um, so I'll, I'll just say this the cost of a rift and the cost of a PC to run it it, which is probably like 1400 to 1500 total with new parts is definitely expensive but it's not overpriced and I think people might confuse those like I think I'm getting a good deal or at least like I'm getting what I paid for when I bought the Rift there's nothing in there that's like cheap that they jack the price up on or 
something like that. Like there's there's a reason other VR headsets are of comparable prices, like the HTC Vive and uh, even PS PSVR is only 200 away from uh, Oculus's price, and that's not even including the camera and motion controls for that. So there's a reason they're all kind of converging on this, you know, high price point, you know, 400 to 800 kind of dollars, and it's it's definitely expensive, but it's not overpriced. The experience is amazing, and the experience is unlike anything else I've ever tried. If you're curious about VR and want and would make the plunge to get a Rift if you had the money or something, I'd say try Gear VR or PSVR. And I haven't tried those myself, but from what I've read, those are still really good VR experiences. They're just not like on the level of the Rift or the Vive or anything. And anything cheaper than those is probably not like, good VR or not true VR, and it might give you a bad impression. But Gear VR and PSVR seem to be pretty good like entry-level VR headsets for you to at least understand and see like, oh, this is what VR is. Like, oh, I completely get this now. Um, but with Gear VR and stuff, you don't have the positional tracking, at least not yet anyways, where you can lean in and the world adjusts. So with all that being said, thank you for watching my in-depth review of the Oculus Rift. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I'd love some constructive feedback on this. Uh, give me a like if you liked the video, if you've made it this far. Subscribe if you want to see more VR videos, and thanks for watching. What's up guys, I'm back from the dead with another video. It's the Oculus Rift unboxing. I've been waiting years for this. What are those things? I like it. I feel like I can touch them. It seems like the Rift. Mm -hmm. You can kneel down too.